The following episode of The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kivitko is a replay of episode 455. Dr. Kivitko will be back in the studio with episode 631 of The Reasons We Smile next Sunday morning. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 455, and today's episode is entitled, To Floss or Not to Floss? That is the question. All right, so as you know, we have heard a lot about flossing recently, about how it may not be effective and that sort of thing, and we're going to delve into that. Hey, before we do, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko, or if you'd go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be great. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates, by the way. All past episodes, complete with video, are available at thereasonswesmile.com. All right. And we stream live on ustreamtv.com. If you're listening but would like to watch, you can go there and type in either Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Okay, as I said, to floss or not to floss, that is the question. So what happened was, a little while back, I'm going to say maybe four months now, the AP... Uh, put out a story that said that it didn't think flossing was worth it. And here's how that came about. Um, and this is the story from the AP. It says, it's one of the most universal recommendations in all of public health, floss daily to prevent gum disease in cavities, except there's little proof that flossing works. This is what the AP said. And then they went on to say that still the federal government, dental organizations, and manufacturers of floss have pushed the practice for decades. Dentists provide samples to their patients. The American Dental Association insists on its website that flossing is essential, I'm sorry, an essential part of taking care of your teeth and gums. The federal government has recommended flossing since 1979, first in the Surgeon General's report and later in the Dietary Guidelines for Americans issued every five years. The guidelines must be based on scientific evidence under the law, which is the problem apparently, because under the law they have to have this really high value scientific evidence. And so last year, the AP asked the Departments of Health and Human Services and Agriculture for their evidence and followed it up with written requests under the Freedom of Information Act. When the federal government issued its latest dietary guidelines for this year, the flossing recommendation had been removed without notice. And then in a letter to the AP, the government acknowledged the effectiveness of flossing had never been researched as required. So that's the key. The research wasn't there that was required to be done. It doesn't, the government's not saying flossing doesn't work. It's just saying, according to the law, the level of research doesn't support us putting it in there as a recommendation in the guidelines. Okay, so remember that. Because to me, it's very, very, and by the way, there are a lot of people that don't floss or don't like flossing, so we're all looking for a reason to not do something that we don't want to do anyway, right? <laughs> it's kind of, it's funny because people will keep getting opinions till they find somebody that uh, agrees with them, and then they'll say, I knew it, I was right all the time. All right, I think this might be a case for that. So let me just go on. Um, <clears throat> it says that, um, okay, the AP looked at the most rigorous research conducted over the past decade, focusing on 25 studies that generally compared the use of a toothbrush with the combination of toothbrushes and floss. And it says the findings are that the evidence for flossing is weak, very unreliable or of very low quality and carries a moderate to large potential for bias. Now the bias comes in, they're saying, because in a lot of these instances, the companies that make floss were the ones that funded the research and that makes people nervous. Uh, the other is they're saying that the research was done 
uh, over too short of a period of time or not enough subjects. Okay, so I think what we're talking about here is that, um, and not that flossing doesn't work, but that it doesn't, the research doesn't meet the guidelines that are required. So one study apparently in 2011 did credit floss with a slight reduction in gum inflammation. And by the way, that's what uh, over time will develop into full-fledged gum disease. However, the reviewers rank the evidence as very unreliable. So anyway, and, and it just that's how this came about. So I, want, I think it's important because there's never been a study that says flossing is bad, flossing doesn't work. What it is, is somebody is questioning whether the studies actually prove that it does. Okay, so that's big. That's big. That's a big important uh, point. So let's, let's drop back for a minute and think about this. Think about your, well, okay, we've all at some point in our lives had something stuck between our teeth, right? And, uh, and in fact, uh, there was a, uh, there was, a, I think it was last week, football game, uh, Cam Newton was filmed uh, flossing his teeth on the sideline. <laughs> and if you're watching this, you're going to see a picture of Cam. In fact, let me see if I can put that up there right now. You'll see a picture of him flossing, and the, the commentators were having a, having a field day with it. There it is. I'm going to put it up right now. So, <laughs> I mean, you get something stuck, stuck between your teeth, you've got to get it out. It drives you crazy, right? Either a toothpick or floss, and I think we've all been there. So what is that? That is proof that flossing gets stuff out from in between your teeth. The other thing that I think we can all relate to is when we take care of things, when we clean our car, when we get the mud off, when we get the salt off, we're pretty sure that that car is not going to rust out as quickly as if we just left the salt and grime sit there. I mean, if it weren't true, there wouldn't be car washes. And they're all crazy busy, right? Uh, as soon as the weather breaks a little bit after a snowfall, as long as it's not snowing right now or all slushy, people are out getting their cars washed. So clearly we've all experienced getting things out from uh, under the gums, getting them off of our teeth. And as I was reading this AP report, and let's face it, the AP wants to sell, AP wants to sell uh, stories, right? And uh, floss companies want to sell floss, and you can't, um, you can't uh, blame either of them for what they're doing. But uh, that doesn't mean that just because the AP says, hey, the research isn't really strong, that it doesn't help. So... Okay, so picture you have a tooth, and, and one of the things it says is, you know, there's no evidence or not, not great evidence that removing plaque from teeth even works. Well, it, clearly it does. I see it every day. My hygienist sees it every day. When we put the floss in there, we get, I'll tell you what, I do the flossing after I've done the cleaning. So does my hygienist. So we've gone in with our hand instruments, our scrapers, our picks, our, all the pokey things that you guys uh, don't like. And, and then we use the profi paste, the toothpaste, the rubber cup with the pumice and we get everything we cover every nook and cranny and the last thing we do is floss and guess what I find a bunch of food and stuff in there even after I've thoroughly cleaned your teeth why because I couldn't reach it with those instruments those pokey pointy things <laughs> I couldn't get in there and the the toothpaste cup is round it's a little cup it can and can't get in between there properly and so the flossing is a big part of what we do so why is it important, though, to, you know, remove the plaque in the first place? It's very important because that material, the, w the way this works, is your body says, okay, there's something here. I don't think it belongs. It's kind of irritating me. So I want to get rid of it. And so the way it does that is new blood vessels are grown. Your body will grow new capillaries, little tiny blood vessels, with the idea that hey, let's carry away this source of irritation, this piece of dirt or debris or plaque, let's carry it away through the plumbing system so it's gone and no longer will it be irritating us, us being the gums. But it doesn't work. And by the way, that is the definition of bleeding gums when you get extra capillaries. So you have extra blood supply. And now when you touch your gums with either floss or a toothbrush or a toothpick or whatever, they bleed. Well, that's your indication that you have inflammation of the gums, which, and by definition, that is gingivitis, okay? But if you don't remove it, it continues to be inflamed, and those gum fibers get really irritated, and they decide they're moving away from the source of irritation. They're going to move down the tooth or further up below the gum line. They're going to move up towards the bone, move away so that they don't have to be sitting next to this gunk, okay? And that's what, uh, that's what the process is. So... It makes perfect sense to make the connection then that if we remove the plaque, food, whatever is on your tooth, um, then you don't have the inflammation and therefore you won't get the gum disease. 
And I can guarantee you that there are several researchers right now <laughs> probably doing research to be able to put this guideline back out there and to say that we now have strong evidence that flossing does work. And so in the meantime, you should just keep flossing because that's going to be your best way to keep your teeth uh, healthy for a long, long time. And that's what we all want. I mean, we're all living longer. The lifespan has expanded by three to five years uh, in my lifetime. And one of the ways to stay healthy is to have your teeth because then you can chew all kinds of foods that we were meant to be able to chew to be healthy. That would be raw carrots and celery and that sort of thing. And uh, not be relegated to, you know, just noodles and soup and soft things, you know. It's just better for us if we can eat all of the food options rather than just some. Okay? So hopefully in an upcoming show, and with this show being 455, maybe in another, maybe by show 500, <laughs> we'll have the evidence that we need. So given that, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about some of the uh, reasons that you're not flossing and why you're, they're not good reasons. We're going to talk about some of the uh, mistakes people make when they floss. We're going to talk about some reasons that you should floss besides what I've already told you. One of the things that'll be fun is the five biggest flossing mistakes that people make. And I think maybe we'll do that when we come back from the break. But what we're going to do first is we're going to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. As you know, every week we do a question of the day and you can call in or email us. Uh, a chance to win a free prize. In this case, it's going to be two handcrafted drinks from Crimson Cup Coffee. And uh, if you want to send an email, you would send it to speaking at the and I'll get it and I'll put your name in with the folks who are calling. But before we do the contest, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kovitko's Question of the Day. Okay, today's episode is called To Floss or Not to Floss. And in that realm, in that vein, uh, it was recently reported in the news that there is little proof that flossing works. What do dentists, including me, Dr. Kovitko, suggest that you do? Do we suggest that you A, ignore that report and keep flossing, or B, throw away your dental floss, it's a waste of time. All right, the winner's going to receive those two free handcrafted drinks from Crimson Cup Coffee. The number to call, 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavicko on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavicko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. And now we have two locations. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavicko & Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavicko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavicko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavicko & Associates today, 614 262 
1-800-227-5588. Hi, my name's Athena. My family and I have been patients of Dr. Kavitko and Associates for over 10 years. We've gone to Dr. Kavitko for numerous reasons, especially cleanings, crowns, and root canals. Since going to Dr. Kavitko, I get compliments every day on how beautiful my smile is, and people always ask me how I get my teeth so white. I used to be afraid of the dentist, but Dr. Kavitko and his staff make me feel very comfortable and relaxed, and I'm not afraid anymore. I would recommend Dr. Kavitko for all your family's dental needs. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today, 614-262-9588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile, and we had some telephone difficulties when uh, my producer picked up the phone. It had this uh, beeping sound or something, and so uh, we're, we've extended the uh, chance to win, 614-459-9769. The phone lines are open, and the question, just so you know, if you're just tuning in, recently reported in the news that there's little proof that flossing works. What do dentists such as myself uh, say you should do? Do I say you should ignore the report and keep flossing? Or do I say throw away your dental floss, it's a waste of time? And just so you know, I say A, ignore the report and keep flossing. Okay, so feel free to call in. All right, so now I said before the break that we were going to do the five biggest flossing mistakes, uh, things that uh, people do when they floss. And remember, we want you to keep flossing. Okay, so mistake number one, you don't floss every day. Okay, you can get gum disease within 24 hours if you don't clean your teeth well. Your salivary glands, which help neutralize bacteria, slow down while you sleep. So flossing every night before and before every night before bed is important. By the way, uh, these mistakes, these five biggest mistakes, come from a Dr. Stuart Sajinik and Dr. Usamari Samaha. Okay, I've seen them in many places, but uh, in the one that I happen to grab, that's who gets credit. Okay, mistake number two. You snap the floss. Snapping the floss into your gums can detach gum tissue from your teeth. Instead, gently glide the floss, and if you have trouble, try floss designed specifically for tight teeth. It's called Glide. They actually have a floss specifically for uh, tight teeth. Okay. So, um, oh, I think we have a caller. Okay, we have a caller and a winner. So we have Sandy on the line. Hi, Sandy. How are you? Great. How are you? I'm great, too. Thank you so much for listening and for calling in. And do you have the answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day? I do. The answer is A, keep flossing. That's right. And were you doing that anyway? Did you ignore the report? I do. I ignore the report. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Sandy, what do you do for a living? I am a postal carrier. Oh, okay. You're so chipper. You sound so chipper. Uh, uh. <laughs> Although I've always, I've never met a letter carrier that I didn't like. Honestly, I have several of them as patients. So good for you guys. Great. Great. Thank <laughs> hey, you. You're very welcome. Stay on the line. We'll get the information so we can make sure you get the gift. Okay. Okay, thank okay, you. and tune in next week, too. All right. So, okay, so as I mentioned, we're doing the five biggest flossing mistakes. And the first one was that you don't do it every day. The second one was that you snap the floss. And by the way, I've seen this. Okay, in fact, you can literally, you can cut into the gum tissue uh, to the point where you need a gum graft if you uh, go through real tight, real hard. Now, the key to that is having your finger or finger and thumb or two thumbs, whatever you're using, close together, as close as you can get them and still get the floss in. Because think of it as plucking a, a guitar string. Okay, you know, if you pluck like a bass guitar string, how far that string can, tra can travel, you know? Uh, but if you go way, if, you, if you're using one of those fret bars or even, even better, if you go up by the uh, adjusting knobs, you know, up above there, the, the wire won't move if you pluck it up there. Okay, so it's kind of the same thing. You don't want that wire, or in this case, floss, to be snapping in. It can literally cut your gums. Okay, so that was number two. Number three, the third mistake that you make when you floss is you saw the floss, meaning back and forth. If you simply thread the floss in and out, you won't get into the crevice between the gum and tooth, which harbors the bacteria that can cause gum disease. So hold the floss in a C shape and cup each tooth. Okay, so you don't, you don't put it in and slide and slice back and forth. You actually put it in, uh, wrap it around one of the two teeth that you're now in between, uh, and then you gently slide up from below the gum line or down if it's an upper tooth. And then you do it again, and you pull up, and you do it again, and you pull up. And then before you leave that spot, 
wrap it around the other tooth, again in a C shape, and then you lift up, and then you lift up until it's all gone. And you can slowly slide the tooth out, the, uh, the floss out as you're doing this, and you'll actually see this stuff on the floss. I mean, there's your proof. You don't need a scientific study to prove that you just got stuff out from in between your teeth, right? It's the weirdest thing that that report came out. But again, they want to sell stories in magazines and whatever. I think the radio stations must, and TV stations and newspapers must pay them for their stories. All right, so number four, you floss with anything but floss. <laughs> if you floss with your fingernails, paper clips, or other sharp objects, you risk gouging your gums and causing damage. Your number one tool, dental floss, waxed or unwaxed, okay? Floss is the best thing to use. <laughs> I can, but hey, funny story. The fingernail thing, I actually uh, had a patient. He was autistic, and uh, he was complaining of sore, sore, something sore in his mouth. Uh, his group home administrators brought him to me, and I could not find anything at first, but I did see red gum. And um, I was about to give up when they said, well, please check again, because he's consistent on this. And, and what I did was I was able to find nine fingernails that he had cut off or torn off. And somehow he had shoved them up in between two, these two teeth. Don't know why. Maybe a nervous habit. I doubt he was trying to floss. But anyway, <laughs> he, had, uh, he had put them up there, and I got them all out, and gums healed up just fine. Okay, and then mistake number five is you think brushing works better. If it came down to one or the other, the choice is simple. Floss, the majority of gum disease, begins between the teeth, and flossing is the only way to effectively reach that area. So there's a thought that maybe, okay, if you were on a deserted island and you had your choice of what you might have available to you, certainly floss would be my first choice because I don't know what else I would use. I might be able to find some brush or some some growth somewhere on the island that I could maybe make a, a crude toothbrush out of, but I don't know about floss. So floss would be good to have, okay? So recapping, the five biggest mistakes you make when flossing or flossing mistakes are you don't floss every day, you snap the floss, you saw the floss, you floss with anything but floss, and you think brushing works better, okay? Those are the five. And that brings me up to another uh, break, which we, we need to go to. So when we come back, I'm going to try to cover, uh, have t I have uh, 10 reasons why you should floss, and I have... 10 reasons you're not flossing and why they're not good reasons. So <laughs> I'm not sure which one we'll have time for. Anyway, you're listening to The Reasons We Smile with me, Dr. Kavitko, and we'll be right back. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Weigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> All right, we're back. I'm Dr. Kvitko. This is The Reasons We Smile, and it's episode number 455. And just so you know, all episodes are available and complete with video on thereasonswesmile.com. And so if you've missed an episode or you want to go back and re-listen to one or watch one with the pictures that we have that scroll through that, that are kind of cool, that's what you do. Okay, now I think what we're going to start with are the 10 reasons you're not flossing and why they're not good reasons. Okay, this was, uh, this was something I found that was um, put out there by Young Eglinton Dental. Okay, I don't know where that is. I just want to make sure they get props for uh, me using their stuff. Okay, and, um, and so um, the question is, did you floss last night? If so, well done. You recognize the value of good dental hygiene and you've done your mouth and smile a favor. If not, why didn't you do it? Now, one of the pictures scrolling on the, um, the video is a little postcard, a little thing. It has a picture of a dentist, and it says, quote, 
It looks as if you have been flossing your teeth way too much, said no dentist ever. <laughs> we would never complain about your flossing, right? And uh, so let's do the top 10 reasons why you're not flossing and why they're not good reasons. Number 10, you forgot. Sure, that happens. To prevent it from happening, though, leave your mini floss box next to your toothbrush holder. You know, the right floss box can certainly complement the decor of your bathroom. <laughs> Number nine, you fell asleep. That means you probably didn't brush your teeth either, meaning that you woke up with really bad breath this morning, like you don't want to be around yourself kind of bad breath. When you feel yourself fading, get up to, get up to floss. Okay? So before you actually fall asleep, that's when you want to stop and go up and brush your teeth and floss. Tip for flossing in the dark? Six quick tugs on the floss will give you more than enough <laughs> if you're trying to figure out how much of floss to have. All right. Flossing is uncomfortable. If it's uncomfortable, you're not doing it correctly or often enough. The key is to be gentle and with a little love and commitment. Flossing will be easy. If it continues to be uncomfortable despite your efforts, you might want your dentist to take a look to make sure there are no underlying issues, which would be a great possibility. Number seven, my gums bleed. Again, as you become more dedicated to flossing regularly, this will stop happening. If it persists despite your efforts, make an appointment to ensure that this is not part of a larger issue like we were talking about earlier, gum disease and, uh, you know, the bone loss that um, happens because of it. Number six, you're out of floss. Come on, every convenience store and gas station sells dental floss, so that's not a good one. <laughs> so unless you're on that deserted island without it, you uh, that's not an excuse. Number five, you already flossed in the afternoon. While we recommend flossing once a day, more is never discouraged. The reason to floss at night is to rid your mouth of any food particles that have accumulated. And by the way, you know, uh, if you're sending, if you're going to bed with stuff on your teeth, that's the worst time. You're not going to realize they're there. And so anything that's built up during the day should really be cleaned off right before you fall asleep. It's very, very important to get that's If you're only going to do it once, that would be the time to do it before bed. Okay? It's great to do it other times, but make sure you do it that one. Number four, you already brushed. The order's not important, just make sure you do both. By the way, I typically will um, brush, then I floss, then I brush again. Because after I flossed, sometimes I have a bad taste where I've pulled out food particles and those, you know, the things that I didn't know were in there, but they were in there. And let's face it, uh, it usually doesn't taste or smell good because it's essentially rotting food. <laughs> it's the kind of, you know, it's like you ever driven by the dumpster or behind a restaurant in the summer? It stinks like crazy, right? Uh, well, same thing in your mouth. Number three, you flossed the night before, and that was smart, but not flossing last night was not smart. So just because you did it yesterday doesn't mean today you can skip it. Number two, you don't feel anything between your teeth. That's precisely the things you don't feel and cause the most harm to your gums and teeth. A piece of spinach can ruin a good picture. Microscopic bacteria can ruin a smile for much longer. And, and think about that. How often do you, you know, you don't know you have a piece of spinach between your teeth. And you're out there and, you, you know, before, you probably were around four or five people before somebody got up the nerve to say, uh, by the way, you have spinach between your teeth. <laughs> and now you're all embarrassed and you wish the first person that had seen it would have told you. So if you don't know there's spinach or something between your front teeth, you're certainly not going to know there's something between your back teeth. All right. Number one, you just didn't feel like doing it. An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. I promise. Okay. And uh, it's, it's, it's very, very true. And you know, we're all about helping people live a healthy life, uh, have your teeth for your life the entire lifetime. There is no reason why people should ever lose a tooth. Uh, dentures were only invented because people were losing teeth back in the day when, uh, when, um, uh, we just didn't have great dental care and we just didn't have the ability to do much better. So anyway, that's it for to floss or not to floss. And the answer is floss. Okay. It looks like I am out of time. And um, so I guess what's time to do then is to say, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Dr. Kavitko and visit my office Facebook page, which is Dr. Kavitko and Associates and like us. Um, remember that all past episodes complete with video are available at thereasonswesmile.com and also on ustreamtv.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love & Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko.
If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to thereasonswesmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588 or send an email to speaking. 